All right, all right. Welcome back to Teal Grit Podcast. We got a special guest. We got a homie from Utah that goes by the name of Santos. Let's see what's good. What's up, Santos? Hey, ¿qué pasó? Dímelo. ¿Qué es lo que, Santos. ¿Qué es lo que hay? Nomás aquí, chilling, buenas vibras. Todo el día, ya sabes. Eso es todo. Man, so where do we start? Um, first of all, I don't even know how we even uh, became to be friends on the social medias. <laughs> Me neither, bro. Honestly, the way I've been just putting my energy out there because I realize I've been on social media a lot, but uh-huh. I really like to network. Yeah, especially in music, the the community in music, bro. It's like you just understand one another, and there's been the the greatest opportunities have came from just bonding with other people that are into music, bro. That have created, mm-hmm. um, and it's all and you know where it all starts is on Facebook and Instagram. So, yeah, I mean, especially now with the pandemic, right? I mean, that's how everybody's talking to each other. And I mean, I guess everybody's exercising their rights to to get online and really push that, you know, push the music that they have or anything they have. It's the perfect time to really saturate the 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 water with the, the music. You know what I mean? Yeah, most <laughs> definitely. It just it's been showing itself, right? So yeah. So to, tell me a little bit about yourself because I honestly, I, I was going through your YouTube and I was going through some stuff that you have that you posted and uh, you have a you have a pretty dope uh, vibe, you know, you got the, your music is like cumbia, reggaeton, you know, Latin. Um, I'm not sure what, how would you describe your music or who or where you come from or que representas pues? Yeah, most definitely. So... Um... <laughs> I love it. I love it. So it's a uh, so my both of my parents are from a pueblito called uh, Estipac, Jalisco, in Jalisco, mm-hmm. Jalisco, Mexico, and uh, pretty much they came to they came to the U.S. first, and then we're in uh, Santana, and that's where my older brother was born, bro, in Cali, and then when they moved to Utah is when I was born. So I was born and raised in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm-hmm. But you know, I would go to Guadalajara and I keep back to Pueblo like pretty frequently. You know, we were blessed. Like my mom was just always wanting to be over there. So, mm. um, so we got that experience, and so yeah. And as far as like describing my music, bro, it's funny because I've been getting that a lot. Like some people, you know, like they just it's been a topic and it's and it's dope because that's kind of the purpose of it. You know, like I think growing up here in the U.S. But having that Mexican culture, like, uh-huh. you know, it's like you have both of those cultures. And so it's just a combination of that, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what I would categorize it as. Um, I think that's pretty dope. But, I mean, it's whatever, you know? It's whatever you wanted it to be. That's the dope thing about it, I guess, you know? Like, I want it to just be, like, relatable to, to the culture like what? In, uh-huh. in my own honest way, you know? Like what? What a what is the music you grew up listening to? I think that's another way too to understand like the yeah. roots. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, I grew up on a lot of banda, you know, like early night, like nineties banda, uh-huh. banda toro, you know, between um, yeah. let's see, uh, just like classic stuff with heels, banda mague, banda machos, like yeah. hella banda music. Uh-huh. And then and then when I was like in sixth grade, bro, my brother. Um, he had a couple hip hop CDs and I would hear some stuff here and there on the radio. But the one thing that I remember sticking out was Nelly, bro. I think mm. it was, uh, that I country think it was grammar? like, <laughs> yeah, it was just like, uh, right with me. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. And then he has the one where they're on the freeway and he's like a cowboy. I forgot what song that is. I think that's right with me. Right. I don't remember, bro. Uh, yeah. I can't but, remember too, but yeah, he had some hitters. But I remember he was rocking that whole country vibe, and he was mm-hmm. wearing cowboy hats, and like you know what I mean. He was on that country vibe, like yeah, from the beginning, and that was like the first stuff I remember, like when I was young. But yeah, that was that was kind of early on, and then I started getting into like 
the G units, like Fifty Cent. Mm. I started getting into like Eminem. No, I didn't really get into Eminem. <laughs> honestly, yeah. I didn't really get into him, bro. Even He's a to dope this day, lyricist, like, man. <laughs> he is. He is. He really is. He really is. He's not, one of the best. Bro. Not the style you you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah. energy. Yeah. The energy. I'm just like, oh, this is too much for me right now. <laughs> uh, nah, yeah. nah, but. It's all about a vibe, bro. But yeah, that that was some of the stuff. That was some of the music, bro. Um, so, and yet, so you yeah, stay in, you stay in Utah, or do you move around? Did you move around, or what's the um? Thing? So I just been traveling a lot um, on the West Coast for shows and festivals. Where um, where about? But I live in Utah. But I live in Utah. Yeah, I'm based in Utah right now for the moment. Oh, where do you, where have you been doing shows in the in the West Coast? Uh, we've been, uh, so I went to LA like twice or like, no, it's been like three, three times maybe now. Uh huh. Um, and then also in San Jose, bro, a lot of San Jose. Really? Yeah. For, uh, Sonido Clash. Oh yeah. 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 You know what? That's probably where I met you then or where I knew of you. Oh. Yeah. Because I've, probably, bro. I've, I've been to I did Sonido the Clash. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, what? Uh, did, ha, did you, you been, go to the? Did you go to last year? I didn't go to last year's, but I think I went to the one previous to that. Oh, yeah, I was at the one. I was at the one previous to that one too, bro. But I didn't perform. I just went to go network to show uh, face, you know. Yeah, that might have been where we, uh, where we connected, man. Because uh, I, yeah. I work with. Uh, I don't know if you heard of Rimo Nido. That's a uh, another group yeah. of collectives that we are like DJs and you know uh, just producers yeah. and whatnot and. I work with the uh, Rimo Nido a lot, so uh, that's probably a, a way that we connected. I, I can't remember, but it, yeah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, most definitely. I think that's where it was there. Because uh, you know then Speedy, right? Yep, Speedy's, or, Speedy's yeah. my guy, yeah. Yeah, I got to meet him. I think we officially met last year mm -hmm. at the Sonido Clash Festival because I think we were both at Selena, Selena, Selena Bration, but we didn't meet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or the yeah that one, yeah, whatever the one within the that ballroom thing downtown. Yeah, I shot I shot the uh, the one they had in Oakland. I don't know if you heard about that one, but they had a uh, Selena uh, Selena Bration or whatever <laughs> however they call it out there in uh, yeah. Oakland. That was a it was a dope dope event. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think we got to go to that one. I think we only went to the one in um. Uh, kind of Actually, no, we did go to the one in Oakland. We were, mm. I think we went there first to start the night, and then we went to San Jose. Mm. Damn, that's crazy. So, uh, so how, did, how did you like the vibe out here in San Jo and all that? Bro, I fell in love, bro. Like, honestly, <laughs> I have I, I have family over there oh. on, my, on my dad's side that they're Guzman, too, from, yeah. you know, from the same area and everything. Yeah. And, yeah, bro, just, just the vibes were cool. I mm -hmm. think that helps a lot too that you have families. It's like, oh, that's big. Yeah, somewhere where you can stop. Like it, yeah, I just like the vibes. It reminded me a lot of over here because of the mountains, mm -hmm. but but also it was cool to just be around like a more diverse crowd, bro. Because over here, like yeah. majority, like the majority is like white people, bro. And mm -hmm. bro, it gets you. It gets you sometimes, dog. I'm telling you. Yeah, well, I was gonna ask you about that. Like, how's what's the vibe? You know, like I know that you're pushing the Latin scene, and how is how big is it out there? You know, like what's the demographic, or you know? Yeah, yeah. So I would say like <clears throat> the Latin scene out here is probably like the overall population. I would say like forty percent, maybe thirty percent. We're like the. If I'm not mistaken. I couldn't even Google it, but I'm like, we're definitely the highest uh quote unquote you know minority in like utah or whatever mm -hmm. oh. and it's like around yeah it's like around there bro it's like 30 30 percent or 40 percent oh, okay so, so yeah. it's not it's not it's not too big but you have a little good mixture of like venezolanos like you do have a mixture of like diversity for yeah. sure but the biggest population is mexican for sure la raza yeah of course <laughs> That's dope, man. Uh, yeah, how, but uh, but but the vibes though, bro. Like, I don't know, man. Because the majority of the people here are Mormon, bro. LDS, so really religious, right? And like, mm. 
they're just it's very like cliquish. Like if you're not Mormon, like they don't you know what I mean? Like they don't really interact with you. Really? Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Can, At least that's how I perceive it. What what's the religion that you that you still are you still religious or anything or you still go to church or any of that? So no, I don't really go to I don't really go to church. Um so like I grew up Catholic, you could say, and then you know, I just started becoming more spiritual, you know, like not making it about a church or nothing. Like I just I to be on like to be like transparent with you, like I like to practice like, you know, the indigenous ways of like Mexico, bro, like the native way, you know, and I started going to sweat lodges and like we used to do danza, you know, but we mm. moved it more to like the con like the consciousness and like like the sweat lodges in themselves, I don't know if you're familiar with them. Mm, I probably might have seen them or, or heard about them, but I don't know too much. Yeah, like un temascal or mm. where they do like it's like a it's like a natural sauna, you know, mm -hmm. kind of type of ceremony, like a native ceremony they do in Mexico too. Like that's where it came from, mm. and uh, just things like that, you know. Um, but uh, very sacred things that uh, you know, I think. Um, I just like let it be. It's like I'm like private about it. You could say, you know, but yeah, things yeah. things like that are. Yeah, I mean, I I grew up the way I would describe it. I, I also grew up Catholic, and um, I kind of get what you're saying. I mean, I, I like to say that I'm practicing and all that, but I'm not really going to church or anything like that. But I do, I do believe there's a higher, you know, power out there, and and I think yeah, it's, definitely. It's just good to practice uh, being a good person, you know. So, back, uh, back, back. I definitely believe in all all of that, just to give back and just do the best you can, or you know, help others. But um, yeah, man, I I agree with you one hundred percent. Okay, and I saw something about I was looking at your channel on YouTube and it says tacos in quarantine. Yeah, <laughs> what, what's that about? <laughs> So I've been vlogging, bro. So I need to actually update that uh freaking thumbnail. But yeah, so we just been vlogging. Okay. You know, we just uh we started the day off with some tacos, and then you know they just gotta tune into the vlog to see what happens next. But yeah, just doing a vlog. Um, you know, pretty much a studio vlog. Uh, I'm I'm asking you too because um I'm a big foodie guy and I love tacos. So out here, I'm doing this uh, series called Taco Tours, and that's why I was interested in what I actually just started watching it before I called you, and then uh, we started doing the podcast. But uh, I'm gonna check it out once we're done. But uh, how how's the food scene out there? Con la comida latina and all that, bro. It's pretty good, you know. I mean, obviously, like I don't like you know compared to Mexico, it's not it's not the same for sure, but. Yeah, it's, it's quality, bro. There's some quality spots. There's a variety of, of everything, you know, but I would say it's pretty pretty good, you know. I think, uh, it, I mean, it depends, like, because over here, there's a lot of people from, like, northern Mexico, and then you got central, too, like, mm -hmm. like, Jalisco area, all the central states. And then, yeah, like, we don't, like, we do have some other areas, but the majority, like, a lot of northerners are, like, people from Jalisco right here in Utah, so. uh -huh. The really, the really good foods are there's some good marisco spots like Sonora style, like mm. or like that. What is it, Sinaloa? Like all those states yeah. that have the, the seafood yeah. vibes, but they're very fire over here, bro. They got the whole thing, Cine la banda playing oh, right there. Oh, okay, White the music, nice. Yeah, bro. The whole, the whole thing, bro. The whole shebang, you know. Like, okay. the whole another vibe. And then there's some Jalisco spots too that are pretty fire. So yeah, man, it's, it's quality. Uh, hay muchas bandas por allá, o, like a lot of grupos. Not, not too many. I mean, there's like a good like maybe under ten, bro, but not too many, bro. Mm. Or maybe I'm just not in touch with that scene. But I've only heard of like maybe like three or four bandas. Mm. Yeah. That are act that were active out here. Oh, I see. No. Nah, there, no, yeah, I mean, if you can combine all the genres of the bands, because some of them play different styles, yeah, I would say there's a, a good amount. Good amount, yeah. yeah. Work. So, tell me, how did you get into the music? Where, did, where, where does that come from? So, pretty much, like, when I was younger, bro, like, I was just always, 
super active, I guess you can say. Um, and I would always be jumping on the tramp, and I just started freestyling, bro, on the tramp one day. Because, mm. I don't know, man, I was just super into, like, hip-hop and rap when I was, like, younger. Mm. That I started on my own, like, just I started rhyming on the tramp, bro. And then that eventually turned into me recording myself when I was younger. And then, yeah, I would record myself, like, on the computer, like, on the old school windows, like... <laughs> Like, on the tube mics, bro. Like, where it's, like, a cord on a tube. Like, Damn. you know what I mean? Well, Started off with that. Moved up to the karaoke machine on the tapes. You know? Put a beat on. Like, I just used to put, like, beats of whatever hip-hop songs were out at that moment. So, you have, like, freaking Chang Hang Low. I don't know if you remember. Uh, Did you listen to hip-hop and, like... Yeah, I remember that. Like, the Chingies, the freaking explosion, like these. This he had a combination of like '90s stuff, like mm-hmm. early 2000s, and then 2004, 2005. I was just getting all these beats, bro. Started rhyming over them, and then finally, I started taking it serious or like recording music that I started putting out there. It was like in like ninth grade, 2009. Mm-hmm. That's when I officially put out like a little project or whatever of songs. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I followed it up with another mixtape, and then I did another mixtape, and then after that, we did like a little album thing, and Damn. and then after, and then since that, it's just been singles. But obviously, like some of that early stuff has been deleted for just like marketing, <laughs> yeah. you know, like to to rebrand. I rebrand myself. Like I'm always constantly just, I could say, just reinventing, re you know, rebranding, just yeah. retouching, evolving the brand. Yeah, evolving it to just always you know um i get you and so and so i'm still to this day you know i'm just always like all right as marketing purposes like if you approach it like a business or a product you know it's like that's what products do until they get a you know where it starts flowing where it starts flowing where it clicks and then you're good so no i I definitely like i'm digging the the music and i'm digging the the visuals you know you got some some pretty nice visuals. I think I was looking at Nome Yames. That was that was uh-huh. one of them. And uh, what is it? Sab- yeah. Sabrosa, I think, was another one I was looking at. I was I was really dig- digging the vibe. You know, you have that good because I'm I'm also a D- I'm a DJ for like ten years, ten plus years. So I I, I have an ear for like good music. You know. And yeah, I was listening to it, and I was like, "All right, you know, I, I'm digging this. You know, like, I, this is something I would I would play at a party." So it's like, Thanks, bro. "All right, that's dope." I actually, probably need you to send me some. Uh, if you have any DJ packs, uh, I'll probably throw them in some mixes. Yeah, definitely, bro. I got you. Is there a lot of competition out there in Utah as far as like uh, music? Um, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of artists out here most definitely i think the biggest thing that lacks is that community you know feel like right now a lot of it out here is just strictly business as far as the latino scene goes Mm. you know and i think that's kind of held back like maybe pushing like you know certain talent collectively you know more efficiently like yeah and i think that's the one thing it lacks i mean and there are people I don't know, man, the way, and the way I always think, honestly, is, like, like, I just stay in my own lane, you know, like, I'm just, like, ah, like, like, I'm just doing me, like, it doesn't matter, you know, Mm. but, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talent out here, almost definitely, I think just the lack of community or consistency of music is what kind of held, like, holds it back a little bit, and that's, and, like, that could be including myself, too, in moments, you know? Yeah. Like I've been talking I've been talking to different people when networking out there, putting that question out there of like creating a space where, you know, where like not even even if you don't have artists that are working together with each other, just the fact of coming together and having like these meetings, kinda like what the you know, what y'all are doing with the team mm-hmm. is like you come together as a team, you know, of individuals and like have missions and goals and content, you know what I mean? And just you yeah. know create so yeah i mean I, I could definitely agree with you as far as you know being in, in a community or or some kind of a group because i used to do the whole rap thing to myself and uh we used to run this th- thing called most skills that was like our our name you know 
and uh-huh. it definitely helps out you know just having a bunch of people that are down with you that are down with the click you know that everybody want there everybody's on the same page it's like everybody's pushing that envelope you know everybody's pushing to to bring that group to to a better place and more more eyes on them and all that so it's like everybody's just really pushing it as one and uh, exactly. it, it's dope you know because and, and then everybody brings different things to the table you know there's there's probably people that are clicked up with a lot of uh, local businesses and uh, somehow they could bring in a lot of people because they know all those businesses you know it's like there's a lot of angles you know to the to having a group but también te tengo que decir que there's a, it's like a double-edged sword because then it's like everybody wants to do their own thing sometimes and it's like no one could agree and it's like it's like being in a relationship you know <laughs> like man, yeah come on guys yeah man it's, it's yeah it's exactly you have to uh you have to be able to like both be able to you know what i mean compromise with each other uh-huh. like a relationship you know yeah. but yeah man I, it, it's a it's the balance you know and those are things that are still definitely you know i'm wondering like still can be learned mm-hmm. as far as having that good balance of you know working together but not being like dependent you know still being independent yeah i mean i think ultimately all of us want that at the end of the day yeah it's dope i'm uh i'm going through the through your channel and just just checking things and i saw that you also have a video with Turbo and mixed and mix tape yeah so that was some behind the scenes of the official music or that was for the video uh it's deja vu, bro. That we filmed right there in San Jose. Yeah, it was it was hella dope. We went over there and uh, what was that? Uh, something rock, Eagle Rock, I think. Uh, it looks like you you guys were at the Rose Garden. Yeah, so we went to the Rose Garden and then we pulled up also to uh, Eagle Rock or something like that. It's like you can go hiking right there, but oh, it has a yeah. yeah, I remember that place. Um. Something rock or something. I yeah. what it's called. I know it's what you're talking East about. Side. Yeah, just don't. I can't remember the exact name, but I know what you're talking about, though. But yeah, we filmed right there, and then on the month we filmed somewhere else. And wh- where's this? Uh, yeah. Where's this video? Is it already dropped or? Yeah, so it should be. If you scroll down, it should be. Uh, oh, they just. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. Okay. Who shot this one? So I don't know if you know Miguel Cultura. Miguel Cultura. Not sure. He's an artist. He produces. He also shoots videos. Hmm. Yeah, it has like that that uh, retro vibe, right? Okay. Who's that? Is that like an actress or just a model that you guys hired? Yeah. Okay. She's like a Instagram influencer model. Okay. Uh, how did you click up with uh, Tur- Turbo and uh, Mextape? Probably through Sonido Clash, huh? So, no. So, I randomly, <laughs> I randomly added Mixtape, bro, on Facebook. Uh-huh. Like, we just randomly, I don't know how, I was just putting that out to the universe back then. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to start adding people from cat. Yeah. Just see, see what happens. Yeah. And and honestly, I had, I had no idea that mixtape, um, like, was into music or anything, bro. I had no idea. I just added him because I saw, like, memes on Instagram, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I was like, damn, these are some funny-ass Simpson memes. Like, it was a lot of dope ones. Yeah. And when I first met him, I told him that, and he was so like the way he, oh man, he he, he just he's a, he's a jokester, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, he is. He's like, oh man, I don't know the way he said it. I forgot what he said, but he was just like, oh man, my life's a joke. Or he just made some joke like that. And I'm like, damn, no, bro, not like that, you know. <laughs> but he was just joking. And his 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 type of humor is very, you know, I don't know how to explain it. Have you you know him pretty well, bro? Uh, I've only met him a few times, so I can't tell you I really know him. Know him? Oh, word! No, yeah. he's he's a cool dude, man. I've 
he's he's good vibes, man. He, he's always just like sharing his knowledge and just kind of, you know, like putting in his like putting in his like experience in there, and I really appreciate it. And he he was just very open, bro. Like so, two years ago, he, you know, we were talking online. Um, I don't even know how, bro. I have no idea. One day, I'm gonna have to look back at the first message that we ever sent each other on Facebook Messenger or whatever, bro. Mm-hmm. But I would always comment on his like, um, on his memes that w- he would post, bro. Mm-hmm. I would always comment, and then we just started talking, and then you know it turned out that he, you know, like uh, he was doing the music thing, and he invited me out to some of class. He's like, "Yo, you should just come out here." He's like, "I can't promise we can get you on the bill because it's kind of like it was like a couple weeks before the festival or whatever." Uh-huh. And then you should come network, you know, just everything. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm down. And I, he let me stay at their spot, you know, his family spot. And just like, they came through, bro. It was all like family and personal. Like, it was just like family vibe, you know. It was, it was tight. That's dope. And yeah, bro. Like, it took me in, literally. And like, I was really blessed for that. Like, for someone to take you into the house, bro. Like, that's just like some next level stuff. Especially like in our culture, I feel like. Cause it's like you know I don't know it's just like you have that respect like that I guess for it yeah I mean especially if uh, if you can relate right I mean if you can relate with someone that's on the same kind of vibe you know you're trying to make it out and and you and you recognize the talent you know it's kind of like hell yeah you know come over you know well I'll introduce you to people and you know you'll you'll be part of the family whatever like that that's dope you know I think that's how it should be it's like yeah. Yeah, man, one hundred percent, exactly. It's just the vibes you put out there, you know. Mhm. And I mean, who knows? Like that could be that that could be something that'll come back to, in your life twenty times greater. You know, like you're giving back, and it's always gonna come back to you. So it's like, why not? You know. Yeah, man, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. No, and that's and that's why I think I like San Jose so much because just the way everybody like kind of accepted me and took me in like there was a couple people that thought that i was from there and it was funny because like the homie mixtape he literally like just like left me bro he just like yo like i have he had like 20 denim jackets he's like yo i'm gonna start designing me he's like bro he's like you want to be fun i'm like yeah sure man and i'm like damn like i'm like what you know like holy I'm like for real bro like yeah that's just like some next level stuff right there bro i'm just like yeah welcome like that i don't know man it's dope like, yeah, yeah, that's that was part of that was part of me definitely like really vibing with San Jose's vibe in general, and so yeah, that's that's always the intention, bro, is taking care of the ones that took care of you, and they plan to the see because they they literally like I'm gonna give them a big thank you, and I'm always thankful for them because they're the ones that like started planning the seed in Cali for me and just connecting me with LA, and yeah, bro, and like other places just through some little class, uh, Mexico City. Mhm. That's dope. So, and also saw that you you work at Jaguar Graphics or something like that. What is that? Oh, so that's just my own thing that I'm doing, like on the side, like my own little side thing, like just doing graphics for for anybody. Yeah, that needs like. How did I've been it, doing a lot of. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say because I I'm a designer myself, and I'm just wondering, like, how did you get into that? So <laughs> I went to like, I was doing a little bit of school with the college, the community college out here. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just took a class one time, bro, in Photoshop, and then it just kind of sparked my interest. And it's funny when you're like, I just feel like when you're creative, bro, like you can kind of translate those things to other like creative things like that. It like just translates really that energy over in a way. It's like really similar to like, when I do graphic design, it's like the same vibe of like freestyling, you know, like like rap, like rap freestyle or whatever. Yeah, you know, or, or just improvising on the spot with your creativity and like just like freestyling things and improvising. Yeah, no, that I, whole essence. I, I dig it, man. I dig it because uh, I've been doing that for a while too, and it's like you know that's the way that you talk. It's like a different language, you know, when you're designing. It's like like I have this this challenge that I do a new design every day and it's just something that I wanted to challenge myself and it's 
it's pretty remarkable like what you can do as a human being like if you really are disciplined you could you could do some you could sit, you could do some damage you know like uh, uh, this challenge i did is to make a design a new design every day and post it on instagram and i'm already like on day 152 or 153 and it's like sometimes i'm like man i don't want to do this but i just knock it out and it's kind of built this kind of like discipline that i could kind of do i'm a problem solver like i could do anything i want you know like i'll, I'll problem solve anything if i want to do that I'll, I'll problem solve it get it done and it, i don't know it's just it, it breaks barriers as far as you know when writers get writer's block it kind of breaks yeah. that that stigma that you you get writer's block as a writer but that just means that you haven't written enough to say that you have writer's block you know yeah yeah most <laughs> definitely no i feel you i totally feel you i think that i was i was looking into the whole thing of like writer's block or um i kind of researching what it actually came down to and it's interesting i think a lot of it's just like energy flow like i don't know like sometimes when you just get in that zone you get in that zone but sometimes like sometimes like that whole writer's block is just like a you know like literally like that energy is being blocked so mm. i don't know yeah I feel, man i feel like it's it's not that bad i mean i guess yeah i guess you do need to kind of break away from that and maybe take a walk or something but i don't know it's like the the more you do like the more writing you do it's less probable that you might run into that writer's block mentality you know yeah, man, it's true. It's it's all about the environment. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Yeah, that's dope. So, um, you like doing like uh, you said you like cumbias and reggaeton. You don't have like a specific style, then, huh? No, man. I mean, I guess I would like to. Uh, we could use the word pop, maybe. You mm. know, I don't know. Popular music. I did. Yeah, but definitely that style. You know, I mean. I don't know, bro. Like I grew up on cumbia, you know. Yeah. And it was more, it was more like banda cumbia, like. Yeah, yeah, cumbia like banda. Yeah. Their interpretation, like all the horns, everything, but I yeah, see me, like that's what that's the vibe, like that I grew up on as far as cumbias. You know, I I can't say I grew up on Tony Day. It wasn't nothing like that. It was more like, you know, like Jalisco style cumbias, and mm. and that influenced me. So I wouldn't say like. I don't know, man. I mean, you, what do you think, in your opinion, like, with this whole new generation of just, like, everything is so mixed, you know, sounds? Yeah. Because, um, you know, I grew up on the early reggaeton, bro. I listened to a lot of, like, I was influenced, too, by, like, De La Ghetto and, like, you know, like, um, who else? Let's see. Don Omar. Uh, I, yeah, Don Omar was cool. I don't know, mom, who, uh, I was like Cine Yandel, you know, Cine like, Yandel, yeah. you mm. know, like the, the top, the top people at that time. I'm just trying to think of some other ones that stood out to me. There's uh, H Hector, El Father, right? Yeah, Hector. He had um, a lot of bangers at that time. What about, his, like, what, ab ones. what about Vico C? You ever get into Vico C? Nah, nah. Oh, yeah. There was, yeah. He's dope. There was I don't know if you remember that song yesterday. There was one called like um Oh Aparentemente. Have you heard that one? Uh like, I can't remember if I have heard that one. Like Aparentemente no no te quieren conmigo. No mm. oh. it was sang by uh the Laquero, I think. Oh, okay. And he was with uh, Yerko and Mackie or something like that. I don't know. It was, oh, I'll have to send you the list. I think it's uh, Yaga and Mackie, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. What about uh, Tego? I didn't listen to. I didn't really listen to Tego, bro. Um, I listened to a lot. Of, I listened to a lot of Pitbull. Pitbull's Pitbull, dope. You know? Remember that? Yeah, Mi was, that remember that Miami one? The the first album he brought out. That was that oh, was a dope yeah. one. Everybody oh, yeah, was on bro, that. Bro. Everybody was on that, huh? Straight up, bro. I was like in fifth grade, sixth grade, fucking singing culo, bro. I had no <laughs> right to sing culo. Sixth grade, uh, fifth grade, you know? Yeah. But hey, that influenced me early on, bro. I remember that being on like, you know, like on the hip hop station out here, bro. Like, it wasn't even back then, that, that back, bro. Like, 
there wasn't like a Latino station. It was just puro like Mexicano, bro. Yeah. Puro Mexicano station. And then like later on, I don't know, 2007, later on, like not, I don't even know. Like they finally had a Latino station, but it hasn't been that long. You know who else is like, uh, I think I admire a lot when when he came out was Calle 13. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just just the way that he freaking raps is like, man, what the hell, you know? Yeah, bro. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. He came with a different approach to that sound, you know? He was completely, he was in his own lane, bro. And that's, that's kind of the goal, too, you know? There's just like that. Like artists that are just in their own, their own lane, you know? So... It's like I can't. It's like I haven't even found anybody that's even similar to that to to Calle 13, You know, like that's how that's how unique that guy is. <laughs> it's true. It's true, man. He's definitely one of the greats for sure. Are there in his, in his are, writing? Are there any uh, artists that you look up to that you that you kind of vibe with that you're like, man, I want to be like this guy. Man, that's a really good question, bro. I, I've I've thought of, I've thought about these things in the past, and it's I feel like there's a like a way too many or a couple. I don't know, man. I'm just like I don't know. I guess it just depends. I'm trying to think right now, like what has influenced me to that point? Because I feel like there's just been you know different times in my life where some artists would influence me and then you know it always changes pretty much yeah there's way too many influences but i mean just just to name a few like i don't know man i mean i was a big fan of grills in general bro i always wanted to grill bro so oh yeah the down south you know Mm. yeah bro once again like i really got into the texas style too like I was super into like fucking the big white tees and yeah, like yeah, tall tees. like the fucking airbrush, like just like certain like things that I would just see on YouTube, bro. And I just started doing the style over here. Did, did you guys um, ever vibe to any hyphy music out there, bro? Like, yeah, it's crazy how much like the Bay influenced Salt Lake, bro. Like, really? I remember early, on, yeah, bro. I remember early on when I was like first starting off in the local scene in Salt Lake City in 2009, one of the artists that were out here really pushing the music, bro, in every sense, like marketing, just everything. They were really like making noise in Salt Lake. They were from the Bay, bro. And they like moved out to Utah or whatever, but not even just that. There was a lot of artists. I'm telling you, a lot of artists at the time, it was more of a gangster sound back then and hip hop. Now it's very diverse. Mm-hmm. The hip hop scene has definitely got more diverse. Um, but back then, everyone was on that total vibe or whatever, but they were all like, everyone was on the hyphy, on yeah. the hyphy vibe, bro. They were all trying to emulate it out here. There were so many people, like, trying to sound like that, bro. Did, did you guys do any of the Ghost Ride the Whips or hyphy trains or any of that? Nah, as far as those <laughs> things, nah. That I never personally, I personally have never seen those. But, oh, man. You, know, you missed that, I don't bro. think I ever heard any, but who knows? You missed out. <laughs> yeah, we used to you do a lot know? of that. We did a lot of that stuff because you know, being in the so scene. What, being so in, what is that? What does that exactly entail, though, bro? Can you tell bro, me? Bro, it's it's just being stupid and crazy and wild. Is basically, you know, like when we go stride the whip, we literally get out the car while the car's moving, and we'd be dancing on the streets. And some people would be on the hood. Some people would be on the top of the car. And this is like in, in the middle of the day sometimes, or sometimes we're we're doing this in the freeway. Sometimes we're doing this in parking lots, like anywhere we could. And then, man, it's just insane. And then I, I have so many stories, bro, because uh, growing up as a DJ, doing all these house parties, man, so many dope stories. But I'm, I won't tell you. <laughs> I, I won't even get into too much. But there's one. There's one thing that always stands out to me that we, when we used to throw parties, all these high fee events, like the way that we found places to throw parties at is that we would drive to the hills to where like a little nicer houses are at. And we would look for houses that are being built. Like the, you could bur- you could see like the, like the two by fours or whatever with like the walls, like one wall on one side, like it wasn't even finished yeah. all the way. And we literally, yeah. we would literally break in that place and we would text everybody that there's a party here. And then you would, and since we had the blackberries, we'd, 
I had like uh, the group set up already, like the party group. And that's probably like, I don't know, 20, 30 people in there. And it, and I knew that hitting up these people, they're going to hit up like another 20 easy. And it's like every time I, I sent that one text, it, it just blew up. And like you'll see like freaking 50, 100 cars out there parked. And it's like a, it's, a, it's a cooking crazy, man. Oh, man. It's so many wow. good, good 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 times man but uh hi i mean there's so many things of hyphiness i mean it's really just being stupid and ignorant and just having a good time and of course some of that stuff is not safe but i mean we didn't give a damn we're super young and being you know we're just enjoying it i mean uh we we go on the freeway when driving on the freeways we'd be out the window like you know just yelling and screaming and singing and whatever <laughs> it's like man uh yeah it's a lot of high, a lot of hyphy uh good times and you know there's also like the the dancing part of hyphy you know like all the uh what do you call it the like the turf the the turf uh dancing a lot of that was yeah. also part of the hyphy movement i mean they have the the turf fiends were like one of the main players in in the, in the dance scene so they're they're the ones that really brought that up in the in the hyphy scene but yeah man there's so many so many good stories though uh, that's why I was asking, like, how how does it impact that the hyphy out there in Utah? You know. Yeah. So, from what I've seen now that I've like, like learned more about the culture, bro. I feel like mostly that like, what I saw was maybe just the music and the way that they would talk and most and like dress. But I never saw no dances. It never got to the and I never saw no ghost ride the whips like that. Like, mm. would you just see it? Would you just see it out there? Like out of the blue oh yeah or is it all the time bro especially more in uh oakland oakland was definitely one of the meccas but i mean you see it all all throughout south bay you know san jose you know all the connecting cities and i mean they also had these things called the sideshows and this is literally just having a party out in the streets like out in intersections and everything like people would just block all the intersections and who who gives a damn about who needs to go by there but they block everything, and then you see a bunch of cars doing donuts in the middle of the intersections. Everybody just wilding out, bro. It's just crazy. And yeah, it's dang, dude. <laughs> it's and uh, then, I mean, and obviously that's when you have to like fucking speed away from the cops, no? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, it, as, soon, <laughs> as soon as you hear the sirens, bro, everybody's like cops or something. Five zero, you know, pigs, whatever. Bam! Everybody gets in their cars. Y vámonos. Like in a in freaking less than five, less than two, three minutes, or everybody's probably gone already. I mean, of course, that, that's yeah. The, uh, that's the fun part, huh? No. Oh yeah, oh man. There's there's been some times, man. That have, uh, I have I've had to. Uh, there's one time that we're on hot pursuit on uh, with my boy because we're trying to get away from. I don't know what happened. Something happened. Someone's trying to funk with us, and we got in, in, in the car or something. We just jet it and i think the cops saw us like take a red light or something and it literally was it was freaking chasing us and the only way that we we're able to get away from the cop the cop i remember is that we got in the freeway right before this other car so we kind of cut the cop off like right and then and because the place was really narrow so the other cop couldn't go around the other car so we literally freaking went through, we cut them off and then we just went you know we stepped on the gas and los fuimos and we, we were we were able to just uh just leave and like he he didn't catch i think yeah he didn't catch us for sure because my boy's like little, <laughs> he was like a little racer guy so he loved that stuff i'm just like damn that's in the that, that's in the theory? yeah bro that's <laughs> some fast and the fury shit <laughs> um, the, the the first one though only the first one yeah and no, i think the first one would be the good representation that's tight, man. That's tight. So when are you coming out here to uh, to San Jose again to do? I mean, of course, right now not everybody's doing any shows, but you have any plans to come out and again and do any any more shows or any of that? Yeah, man, most definitely. We had a uh, we were gonna do. They were having a the homies at um what's it called? I'm trying to remember their name right now. Ah, uh, dang it. Um, culture. I can't remember their name right now, bro, but they're based from Florida. Mm -hmm. And we were going to do a music festival out there. Uh, but 
that got rescheduled. And then we're also, I mean, right now, as far as the moment, we don't have anything planned. But funny enough is I have been putting the intention out there to definitely go out to San Jose like pretty soon to just network and collab, you know, for mm-hmm. artists that are down. Yeah, just because I I like the vibes over there, and there's a couple individuals that I just connected well with, and I want to just keep pla- you know watering that that relationship pretty much, um, just showing that 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 drive. So yeah, and I don't know if you know, maybe you are familiar with them, but it's uh Sonatron, bro. I'm, I really want to start you know networking and just hanging with the with the homies. I just made a good connection with them. Are you familiar with Sonatron, bro? It sounds familiar. Uh, what kind of music is it? So it's like cumbia, and but they mix it with like kind of like rock. Mm. It's uh, son los hijos de los tigres norte, bro. Oh, really? Oh shit, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, bro. Son they're they're from San Jose, bro. I'm, uh, I need to check them out. Damn. Oh man, that's wild, man. Yeah, they're <laughs> from son los hijos. Well, there you go, bro. Yeah, they're... got you, bro. They're from right there from San Jose. Oh, so, so, okay, I see it right here. Cumbia Cali, right? Yeah. Ah, damn, interesting. I need to check it out. Shit. I mean, there's always, there, there's always so many artists, you know, it's kind of, sometimes it's so hard to keep up with who's new out there and all that. Yeah, bro, locally, no? You know, imagínate, so, este es un género, or probably something that they started, and there's, Freaking hundreds, if not thousands, of genres or subgenres from uh, maybe not thousands, but there's I'm sure there's probably hundreds or tens of uh, subgenres of cumbias or banda, whatever you know. It's like it's never ending. It's never it's always evolving. It's always becoming something different. Exactly. But, but that's that's dope, man. I'm I'm looking at the video the cumbia cali. It looks pretty sick. I I need to check it out later yeah man shout out to the homies like i met him in san jose like we went to the winery because mm-hmm. the theater in north tocando allá, bro in the mountains uh-huh. right there i don't know if you know about that winery it's like on the mountainside close to san jose i'm not sure about that one what, what is it you don't know the name i don't remember bro but the theater mm-hmm. north they were playing there yeah and it was just like this bougie like wine place you know where they grew wine and yeah. everything like but it was like a stadium right there around, like built inside, and they had like a winery, like they had a whole bunch of wine. Yeah. And, and bro, like it was hella beautiful. It was on the mountainside right there in like San Jose. I don't know. I think it was probably a different area, bro, because we went hella up there, like. Oh. Huh. Like we were, we were hella up there, but um. But yeah, they played right there, and then I met the son. I followed them on Instagram, and then the homie mixtape. He actually like put the word in for me mm-hmm. to uh, to the homie that you know like that I was gonna be in town or whatever trying to meet him, and then I just met him, said hi, took a photo, mm-hmm. then after that, um, I think we saw him one other place. I can't remember. I don't know if I that was the only time I saw him just in the beginning. I think that was it. We just met him, took a photo, that was it, and then we try to we were gonna try to meet up that trip, but nothing happened. Like I hit him up and they didn't answer. Um, and then long story short, I think they came out, they came out here to Salt Lake. They opened up for, uh, also Motley. Oh yeah. So Motley, yeah. And, um, they're like, yo, you should come through and do a song with us. And I was like, yo, I'm down. Damn. That's dope, man. Yeah, bro. And so ever since then I've, I've been like, yo, these are, these are, these are, these are dope dudes. And so. Yeah, that's that's dope that they're willing to, you know, work with their people, with their gente, you know, the raza. It's like, yeah, of course they might they might be up there with um, as far as you know production and all that, but they're still open to to talk to to talent, you know, to anybody that that wants to do anything. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty dope. I mean, I don't know how they work as far as like choosing the collaborations, but I think it's cool that at least they're. You know, they're talking to you and they're showing the interest. That's pretty dope. Yeah, man. And even and that's the thing is like the way I like to collab too is just like it has to happen organically. You know, you don't want to take anything else. You don't want to rush into or force it. Mm-hmm. And some sometimes collabs happen late, you know, like 
it's just kind of just putting yourself in a situation to see if it if it's meant to be or if it's not meant to be, you know. But at least going and finding out and trying and yeah and trying, you know, trying trying to starting off the conversation and see where that goes, you know. Yeah, that's dope. And then just kind of just go off of that. So yeah. How how's your your process in making music? Do you usually like write your stuff down on a notepad, or are you one of the iPhone guys, or how do you how do you develop the music? Yeah, man. So it depends. I've actually recently been going back to the to the to the notepad, mm -hmm. but that's when I usually only write like a couple lines. Like I'll write a one phrase or two phrase. It'll just like. I'll just kind of be freestyling and then I'll just write one phrase down. It just depends right there. And then, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I do on my phone too. I do that same process. I'll write like a line or two lines. Mm -hmm. And then later on in the studio, I go in and just kind of improvise off of that. That's one process. And then there's a, like sometimes I do just write the whole thing out and just write it out, you know, and then just go back and edit it. Or sometimes I don't even edit it. I just kind of just go with the vibe, you know? Yeah. What about the... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, I think that's the most important thing is just, like, going with the vibe of, like, the words that you're choosing and whatnot. Because, I don't know. Like, to me, I just want for it to stick with people, like, as far as, like, something catchy, you know, that they can sing to. But also something that's, like, me, you know, like, something that me being sincere you know even if it's not maybe the most positive thing it's like at least at least i'm being sincere you know yeah what about the producers you work with because I, i like the music like the way it's composed like who's who's making all these these uh songs for you like who's uh, producing the instrumentals and all that man so i've been really blessed you know to work with great producers like you know from san jose like turbo sonidero mm. on the cumbias Mm -hmm. um as far as the reggaeton has gone i've been working with um one of the homies too he's a he's a, a mexican cat from here right here también from my area um uh, outside or edgar estrada he produced some of the reggaeton stuff mm. and kind of like touched it up for me but it's also been collaborations also with caballo del norte as mm. far as some of the cumbias also which They're more of like a Mexican Norteña uh, grupo. Yeah. But but the main singer in it, he's a good friend of mine. And he's been like a good mentor to me too as far as like, he's coming from a world of like, where you can get stadium, like you can get, um how would I say it? Um, like party soul, bro. Like like a DJ. Like you're playing songs that you want people to dance to and you can get a party full too. And mm -hmm. like that's, that's really, you know, that's really how I approach it, bro. That's dope. Like a DJ, so. And do you, do you reach out to these producers, or or they reach out to you? Um, it's been a, it's been a combination of both. It just kind of depends, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's been me reaching out to them, and then after that, it just kind of started planting the seeds, you know. It just started kind of like evolving. Like you put out a project with a certain producer that's from out of state like for example Turbo he connected me with a guy from uh, New York bro he's from Brooklyn mm. but I believe um, I can't rem I can't remember I think he yeah no yeah I think he's Mexicano bro mm -hmm. and he lives in Brooklyn and and long story short he he was he co-produced um, my other cumbia uh, I believe Pero Noche Um, he co-produced that one, bro. Oh. And and then after that, like, we started doing our own project, but we've never met in person. So that's one of the homies that, like, he's blessed me, bro. He's literally on the other side of the world. Like, we've never talked on the phone. Like, I've been trying to get on the phone with this guy, and, like, we've <laughs> never talked, you know? He's uh -huh. just very, like, he's just very reserved, I, I guess, you know? Or whatever. It's cool. Like, I don't take it personal. I just... yeah. I just go with I just go with the vibes, you know. I don't force anything. I just yeah. let things be natural. Yeah, let's put it like, out there, see what happens. Yeah, I just let it unfold how it you know, how it does. Like I'm not gonna trip over it. So Yeah. 
Uh, it's interesting. It's funny uh, when you mentioned that because it reminded me of a time that I almost got catfished by some chick. Oh, I don't know if he even if it he was even was a chick or not. But, oh no. Yeah. Bro, this stuff is real out here. I've, <laughs> I've been in a situation. I've been in a situation. You're like, what's up? FaceTime and you know, no hot like I'm okay. There's always a an excuse. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Have you been in that situation? I'm, I mean, not not where they don't want to like Skype. Well. Kind of, yeah, actually, recently, but <laughs> it, it was a little different. It was a little different, bro. So, yeah. oh, man, like, so I was on, what was it? I don't even know, bro, but there was this girl, man, and I thought it was a girl, but it wasn't a girl. <laughs> it will, well, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. What? We're going to have to. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> Raquel, no te crees. <laughs> you, you heard the song Raquel? Raquel, yeah. <laughs> oh man. No, nah, I'm just kidding. No, it was I. Well, I, I don't know. Like she was, she was a she was trans. Ah. I believe. I believe. I mean that she and she never she never told me. She never uh-huh. said anything. She never mentioned it, bro. Uh-huh. And like with the with these other pages, they usually mention it in the <laughs> in the bio in the bio, right? Yeah. And, you know, not, I mean, nothing happened. I never did meet her. I just, we were just talking a couple of days online. And there's not an issue with it. There's not a problem with that. Yeah. If she was, if she wasn't. I have nothing against it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was just like, I had to figure it out on my own, bro. Like, I was <laughs> over here just, like, taking notes. You know, I'm over here, like, huh. Like, just hella taking notes, bro. Yeah. Like, she pretty much, like, was saying it herself, but never said it. That's what kind of was like irritating uh, about it because like oh bro like <laughs> I, I was trying to send her a voice audio on snapchat or whatever because uh-huh. honestly it's more convenient for me that's just how i talk to people bro it's through voice audio i'll just be like hey yo, what's up yeah. or whatever like uh-huh. just, that's just how i communicate and anyways i was like yo why don't you send me an audio like come on over here just say stuff like that and then she responded and like her voice was all deep, bro. And I was like, Oh dude, what the hell, dude? Like, oh, man. It's like, like it's like taking them just out. Just tell me. Yeah, dude. Just tell me, dude. I'm not gonna And then <clears throat> eventually she told me when I literally had to like ask her like so many times. And I'm just like, All right. I already knew it was obvious, obviously, you know. It's just the whole respect thing of like, I don't know, man. I don't know. It was a weird situation, but I mean, the only thing you could do is just, you know, tell them, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't swing that way. Yeah. Know? I don't, I don't swing that way. I mean, I, I respect, you know, the, who you are, your, your choices, but I prefer to be with, uh, con una vieja, pues. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, damn, dude, this combo just got hella like to the next level, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I could, I could only imagine what, would have happened if I ever met the person I was talking to because I I talked to this girl damn near almost every day, and we had this real? good relationship, bro. And then I would always be like, "Well, when are we gonna see each other?" Or you know, when when can I fa- uh, Skype you at that time or whatever? And siempre había excusas. I'm like, "Come on, like, what's up?" And I, I just got tired of it. I just told her, "You know what? This I, I think you're hella fake. You're not even a real person. I'm just gonna please delete my phone. Like, I don't want to hear about you anymore." And it it just never happened. Like nothing really happened. But I feel like that could that would have been a catfish situation right there. Yeah, man. And it's crazy <laughs> to think it's crazy to think that this is real life. Like this is like normal. Like I've heard people go through this one way or another. Like maybe if, even if you don't meet them, mm-hmm. like you definitely have talked to people that are like catfish profiles. You know, like yeah. And you when you start like getting older, you start realizing start catching on to to it you start kind of noticing like i don't know dude i can always spot a fake profile when i get a firm request bro i can spot it so fast every uh-huh. time bro like i can just spot fake profiles like it's so easy yeah i i, I think I'm, i've got pretty good at that too like i usually know when it's fake like not a lot of information it's like a really nice picture of them like too too good and I don't know. It's just sometimes you just you just know. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's so obvious. It's so yeah, exactly. 
they have like two pictures like they're really nice pictures but there's only like two that were uploaded like two hours ago yeah like there's just very obvious times you're like what the yeah. but but yeah it's 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 definitely an experience you know i mean it's definitely an experience but yeah it's that time that it happened you know it's just like it's just wild bro cray cray what about uh yeah. what well, what about the grind so i don't even know like how, what do you do out there or for the grind like guess is por por la feria do you have a job do you you hustle what what is it yeah so you know right now i've been doing some side work of like the side work of like graphic design Mm. But I was I was also working uh, at the community college, bro. Okay. I just recently, yeah, I just recently put in my uh, my two weeks though. Uh oh. And yeah, and so yeah, but uh, now I'll be starting a new opportunity to just like expand my skills even more. Like just going with the process, the new opportunity. Yeah. Um, to grow, honestly, is how I see it. And it's gonna be with uh, I don't know if you heard of musicians friend, but I'll be doing I'll be doing that. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, what's musicians friend? What is it? It's uh, it's like a, it's like a, like a customer service thing for for their website. Hmm. It's pretty, yeah. Okay. So. Dope. So yeah, we're doing that, and then you know, obviously, and then obviously also music. Um, but yeah, man, just doing that right now. Like right now, I'm just fully independent, just you know, just building up my brand, and then just learning all the time, and that's the way to looking, go. Yeah, yeah, just investing in myself on the side over here, you know, making it happen that way. Cause yeah, yeah, man, there's just too many. I don't know. Just don't want to. I'd rather be the uh, the turtle, you know, instead of the hare in this situation. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was. I was going to ask you, uh, um, what's what's the prices for houses out there? I know it's kind of out of topic, but I'm just curious. Like, what, what, what are the houses worth out there? Honestly, I know that they're definitely cheaper than Cali for sure. Especially <laughs> they, they, they better, they better be shit. <laughs> Oh, bro. I mean, you're getting a good deal out here. I know. Funny thing is, when we did the thing with Sonatron and also Mali, bro, like, um, there's a guy from San Jose that used to, you know, used to live over there, moved over here now to, like, hella out there, bro. Like, kind of, yeah, hella out from the city, bro. But he got a big ass house, and he was saying, like, it was still way cheaper than over there. Yeah. And he, and he was surprised, like, for how many rooms and all this stuff, bro. He was like, he was so excited and I was like, dude, that's so wild. I was like, that's tight though. Because it just shows you. But yeah, right now Utah is really growing, especially the the, major, the biggest city, Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. It's growing really fast right now, bro. Like really fast. You know, Facebook's coming over here. Google's coming over here. They're trying to turn, they're trying to turn this area. Um, like it's a little bit below Salt Lake and it becomes a new county or whatever, but they're going to, turn that area to silicon slopes you know kind of be oh. the little brother of silicon yeah. valley yeah Damn. um all these tech companies are coming over and like bro it's just booming over here like oh yeah they're building cool. everywhere bro it was farmland and stuff but now it's like boom hella building damn so, so, I mean, so that means so, people are gonna so be growing. getting paid man <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah people are bro people are already you know yeah. damn it's wild, man. So that's what I've been telling my fam, you know? And, like, I've been learning from the homies in San Jose. They were telling me the same thing, like, suitable. You know, he kind of shared his, his experience with living over there and how the prices have gone up in the market. Mm-hmm. And pretty much the lesson I learned from his story with his family buying early on before it's hella expensive, where it wasn't that bad. And mm-hmm. now if they wanted to sell their house, they'd make a good... You know, they make a way good fucking return and investment and everything. It's like a retirement um, almost. <laughs> yeah, bro, for real. And that, to me, since I've seen that Salt Lake is growing, just like, and they're trying to turn it into the next time, we'll say, bro, like, that's why I'm already getting prepared for that. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right, now it's time to take action right now. Yeah. Plan to see. 
and just water that bad boy. Well, what what are the what are the houses worth? Do you have an an idea like how much they're worth out there? I mean, honestly, let me. I mean, dude, I got an app. I got an app, bro. Okay. I honestly don't know the top of my head. Like, uh, we've been looking for one, but they're not that. They're not that expensive, bro. They're pretty cheap. Like, like two, three hundred. Like four. Yeah, bro. Like, here, let me look it up real quick. <laughs> my my realtor from Utah is gonna let me know how much it costs. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I always uh, thought about going into real estate, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it's like the average is probably like 20 or 30, bro. 20 or 30. 30K. Oh, 200 or 300? Like, you know, 10,000 or 30,000. What? What? The down payment? Bro, I don't even know honestly nothing about how they play. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, what? Thirty thousand for what? The down payment? <laughs> Bro, I honestly don't know anything about. <laughs> that would be insane if they're like thirty thousand a pop, because uh. Oh no, not a pop. Not yeah, a pop. yeah, they got to be at Bro, least I, two, three hundred thousand. I'm pretty sure. Man, I'm just gonna pull up the trusty Google over here. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, it's all right. I mean, I just, I just thought yeah, you, you might have known. What so you're talking about, here. renting or buying, bro? No, buying, bro. Gotta, we gotta own, man. Yeah, exactly. That's right. That's what, that's exactly okay. So the average right now since 2009, so buy is saying it. What here? Shit. Damn, what the heck? It just came up. <laughs> so, like... So. Oh, um, 33... Oh, bro, I don't... Damn. 335000 There you go. So, I was pretty close. That's the, that's the medium home price right now. Yeah. But it says it has risen dr- drastically over the past several years. Uh-huh. Damn. So, yeah, dude, it's been raising hella fast, bro. Oh, yeah, that's that's the medium. It's not bad though. I mean, bro, you know how much what you could buy out here for like freaking four hundred or three hundred. Like, you you can't even get what anything that? that's even that even looks decent. Like, it's probably all really? messed up. Freaking looks like a like a crack house or something. Yeah, man. for real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got to spend like at least a good. 500 600 to get something pretty good but yeah it's it's pretty crazy <laughs> dang bro i honestly think that's like damn man what but the- hey but the way I, the way i look at it is that yeah it's expensive out here but what we're paying really is for the weather you know like we have pretty good weather i'm not going to complain about that it's like we get nice nice heat nice cool times a little bit of rain uh, you know, the no, we don't get snow, but it's it gets chilly, you know, in December or whatnot. But we have uh, we have good weather. I mean, the only thing yeah, I, that's really what it is. That's that's yeah. true, bro. What part, hey, bro? So what part is your family from, bro? Where are you from? So, so what part of Mexico? So yo yo nací in Mexico in uh, Pátzcuaro, Michoacán, and uh, my family is all well. My mom is también de allá de uh, de Michoacán, and my dad too. I forget what cities exactly but they're from michoacan as well and most of my family i mean is in michoacan and uh, a lot of them moved out here to santa rosa i don't know if you know santa rosa or petaluma but they live out there I, yeah i think i've heard of it yeah they live out there most of my uh, my, my uncles and cousins from my mom's side but a lot of them are also in mexico but um yeah so I, I was born in Mexico and I was raised in San Jose ever since I was like two years old. So it's uh, really like I was born here in a way. Yeah, bro. I feel you on that. I know a lot of people like that. And it's crazy, you know, growing up, like, I don't know. It's like, of course, San Jose is my hometown. Like this, this is where I, where I could, you know, identify myself from, but uh, my roots, they're, you know, throughout life, siempre como que se resaltan, like, I, like, I need to, 
learn about my roots every time like i don't know i feel like it uh, it always connects with me through music and through food and through you know fashion everything just kind of comes back to me like like telling me yo don't don't lose sight of your culture you know yeah man 100 especially especially in this climate you know and vibes here mm-hmm I think that's the most important thing to do is to invest into yourself. Yeah. As far as your culture goes too, that's like investing in yourself too. Yeah. Building, um, building that equity. <laughs> yeah. That culture, you know, for the future generations, because that's through that culture is how you teach, you know, the, the way. Well, I mean, if we don't, if we don't teach it, uh, the people are, the kids that are going to be born, they're just going to, live with the american culture and not have any any cultura you know from the roots and it's just going to be like it's going to be like a formatted you know hard drive that is just whatever they want to put on top of that drive it's what it's going to be so we got to definitely we have to instill that you know with our people and with our little young ones yeah man and it's an interesting vibe when you go to mexico dude and you're Mm. from over here it's just like you know you realize I mean, that's what I want to be working on myself. But, like, I feel like back then, people were kind of, like, more closed-minded, especially in the ranchos. Like, mm-hmm. they're more closed-minded to people speaking English and all that stuff. Now, I feel like it's becoming more, especially, well, especially in the city. In mm-hmm. the Pueblitos, it's still kind of like that, but not even because you still see hella people that used to live over here in Utah, bro. Like, it's funny. There's actually, like, a little community of, like, so many people from the same pueblo bro mm-hmm. like like literally right here in Salt Lake, we have so many people from my parents pueblo it's like they just all came here like a lot of families bro not like a couple like a lot and there's actually a lot of people from michoacan too uh-huh. uh, right here where i grew up like la piedra michoacan i don't oh, know if yeah. you've heard of it yeah la piedra uh-huh. yeah i had a lot of a lot of my childhood friends and their families and cousins they all live right here in my same I grew yeah. up in like a trailer park mm-hmm. my whole life. Yeah. And so, yeah, bro, we were all from Jalisco and Michoacan. There's yeah. a lot of people from Guerrero too, a lot of Afro Latinos, mm-hmm. Afro Mexicanos. Mm-hmm. Calicienses. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's that's dope, man. It's uh I think it's a beautiful thing that it's and it's also crazy that you know, you're out there in Utah and I'm out here in San Jose and we're like making something happen through the phone, you know? <laughs> exactly. That's pretty crazy. I, I, I respect that, bro. That's what it's about. At the end of the day, like I just love connecting with people that are just down, you know, like no yeah. excuses in between it. Just like down to like do something productive, yeah. something, something creative, you know, like. That's what made me so happy the other day. We were filming for my new video, Sabrosa, which will be coming out the 25th, bro, of okay. this month. And and the vibes were just like, it was just next level because everybody there was just like about it. Like everyone wasn't like questioning it. They weren't like, yeah. uh, like slacking. Everyone was literally just like on focus mode because we all knew what we came here to do and it was to shoot the music video. But it was all good vibes. Like we were sipping a little bit everyone's just getting loose you know like dance a little cumbia you know like yeah just getting the getting get in the zone and it just turned out amazing probably the best music video i've ever shot to this day bro because we were all just vibing Damn, and that's, that's when i realized that that's what it's about you know that's hey, hey let me know that's what it comes down to let me know next time man i'll, I'll come so- show some support next time we shoot a video yeah, most definitely, bro. One hundred percent. And like I said, I I want to go to I want to go back to San Jose. I have a primo over there that he he's down with me coming through and staying with him. And I just want to be out there, bro, and just network with with the folks out there. You know, with you and everyone out there, just create create some content. You know, and just yeah, kick it, good vibes. Just you know, buenas vibras. Yeah, exactly, bro. Just vibe out. That's dope, man. Well, I want to thank you again, Santos, for uh, accepting this invitation to be on the Teal Grid podcast. Uh, I don't know if you want to s- plug the the podcast with any any way people could get in touch with you, uh, any handles or anything you want want to shout out. 
Yeah, most definitely. Uh, you can find me at Musica de Santos on Instagram, um, YouTube, Santos X Guzman, and then just Santos Guzman everywhere else, you know, on all my uh, streaming services out there, Santos Guzman. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and also, you know, for booking purposes, hit that email up. So yeah, DM me and we can booking. Book Santos Guzman, so at you know, so for hit, sure. Hit me up. Hell yeah, and uh, I'll definitely include the links in the description of the video. And um, yeah, man, I think uh, this is a pretty good episode, and I'm pretty sure we'll have many more, uh, more many more t times of uh, collaboration or something. <laughs> yeah, most definitely, man. And thank you, I appreciate your time and. You know, the good vibes and your willingness to work. And so I'm excited, man. Just whenever, just let me know. I'm, I'm always down. I'm always down to put in work and so create community. So, eso es todo. Hell yeah. Well, thank you once again. And uh, you have a good day, bro. You too, bro. Take care. Appreciate Arla. you, bro. Arla, pues. Late.